Joining us now on the line from Cambridge, Massachusetts, Roberto Mangabera Unger. He is a former Minister of Strategic Affairs of Brazil, now a professor of law at Harvard University. And Mr. Unger, we're glad to have you on the program. How are you tonight? I'm fine. Very nice to be here. We want to share a few fast facts about your country, Brazil, with our viewers, since uh, people may not appreciate how big and how important Brazil is in the world today. For example, its economy is growing by 7%, which is three times faster than the American economy. It has 14% of the world's fresh water. Canadians probably do know it's the world's largest producer of iron ore because, of course, they own uh, uh, an iron ore nickel manufacturing company in uh, Sudbury, Ontario, Vale Inco. And it's the world's leading exporter, which people may not know, of beef, chicken, orange juice, coffee, and tobacco. And I want to start with this. We had a guest, uh, Min Chin Pei, from the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace on the program the other day talking about China. And he said regarding the Chinese people that many feel their day in the sun has arrived. And I wonder if the Brazilian people feel similarly. Brazil is undoubtedly on a roll. Brazil is, is going up. Uh, it has many uh, advantages, uh, vast natural resources, as you pointed out, a vibrant, although flawed, democracy, and considerable national unity. But I think our biggest attribute is that the country sees with life, with energy, with dynamism in all of its forms. Uh, and our greatest problem is that the majority of ordinary men and women lack the opportunities uh, and the tools to do something significant with their lives. So there is a still a tragic contradiction between the vast creative energy that pulses in our country and the denial of opportunity and capability to the majority of ordinary working people. Let me get you to weigh in on comparisons between Brazil and the United States, which many observers, of course, feel are moving in opposite directions these days. Do you feel, though, that these countries uh, still have a great deal in common? Uh, Brazil is, in many ways, the country in the world that is most like the United States, uh, although this similarity often goes unrecognized in both countries. They are two countries of almost identical size, uh, established on the same basis of European settlement and African slavery, multi-ethnic, multi-racial, and very religious societies. Each of them is the most unequal of its type. The United States is the most unequal of the rich countries, and Brazil of the large developing countries. And paradoxically, in both of these two very unequal societies, the majority of ordinary people continue to believe that everything is possible. Hmm. Brazil and the United States, of course, both face challenges of economic transformation, reducing inequality that you've just talked about. But I want to know, how is the conversation about what needs to change different in Brazil from the conversation that takes place in the United States? Uh, we face similar tasks uh, uh, in the United States and in, and in Brazil. Uh, our, our greatest uh, task in the next phase of national life in Brazil is to remedy this contradiction between all of that human energy and the lack of adequate uh, instruments and opportunities. We need to build a new model of development based on a decisive broadening of economic and educational opportunity. And that will require innovations in the institutional arrangements of the market economy and of the political democracy. The Americans face a similar problem, uh, although they don't seem to understand clearly that they do. The truth is that the progressives in the United States and their major political instrument, the Democratic Party, have failed to come up with a sequel to Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal uh, in the middle of the last century. Uh, so even now, this great uh, uh, economic crisis that hit the United States and the world and has resulted in, a, in an economic slump would have been a tremendous opportunity for the Americans to uh, open up a new path 
a path of opportunity for the ordinary guy. And thus far, they have failed to do it. We in Brazil have not succeeded, but uh, I do believe that at least we increasingly understand that this is the work before us. Well, follow up on that difference if you would, because you, you told us a few moments ago that America and Brazil were alike in many ways, and yet now you say Americans seem unwilling to make the kind of institutional changes they need to to improve their society, but Brazilians seem to be more open to it. How come? Well, Brazil is a much less formed country, of course. It's a poorer country. Uh, and despite these great similarities between the two societies, there is one respect in which we are very different. Uh, a characteristic uh, defect of the American political culture is the belief common among Americans that at the time of the foundation of their republic, uh, they found the definitive formula of a free society, which needs only to be adjusted from time to time under the provocation of crisis. And according to this belief, the rest of the world uh, either subscribes to the formula or languishes in poverty and despotism. Uh, we in Brazil have historically suffered from the reverse problem of not believing in ourselves uh, in the sphere of institutions. Our institutions are, for the most part, not ours. They're copied. They're like borrowed clothes, uh, many of them copied from the United States. And that's one of the reasons why they have failed to uh, perform this indispensable role of uh, supplying opportunity and capability to the majority of working people. Uh, so uh, we, we begin from a much lower base. Uh, we uh, increasingly understand the, the gravity of our situation. And my hope as a, as a Brazilian citizen uh, is that we will now meet the challenge of decisive institutional innovation to our benefit and to the benefit of humanity. I want to do another American comparison with you, if I can, and that is there's great fear in the United States that their middle class is disappearing. In Brazil, if I've read the research correctly, there seems to be this emergence of a second middle class. Can you help explain that to us? Yes. The, the traditional middle class in Brazil is a white middle class. Uh, oriented to Europe and to the United States. Its, its economic base it, are jobs in the public sector and professions. Uh, and in recent decades, we have seen in Brazil the emergence of a second middle class, a mixed race middle class rising from below, composed of millions of Brazilians who struggle to open up uh, small businesses, who study at night, and who inaugurate in our country a new culture of self-help and initiative. They are already in command of the popular imagination. They are the vanguard that the mass of working people wants to follow. And the, the great revolution in Brazil today would be for government to use its powers and resources to enable the majority of people to follow this path of the emergent middle class. Hmm. Let's see a little further down the road where this path goes, and that is you know that there are considerable discussions going on around the world today which focus on two things. Number one, America in decline, relatively speaking. It's still obviously a hyperpower, but not like it once was. In which case, which countries are going to come and you know, pick up the slack? And many people are looking to Brazil to do that. Do you think the Brazilian government and the Brazilian people are ready to play an increasingly important leadership role on the world stage? Uh, yes, but power uh, is only a means. It's, it's not an end. The decisive question is, to what end will we, will we exercise this, this growing power? Uh, what would give uh, Brazil great and beneficial influence in the world is if it used its power uh, in the service of a path of, of value to all mankind. And th there are very concrete things we have to do. Uh, we have to uh, develop an industrial policy focused on the most important sector of our economy, small and medium-sized business, so that this sector can 
uh, absorb and master the most advanced experimental practices of production. We have to ensure that family-scale agriculture uh, becomes entrepreneurial agriculture and not simply subsistence agriculture. Uh, we have to uh, rescue nearly half of the economically active population from the illegal or so-called informal economy. Uh, and we have to crea create a, an analytically oriented, problem-solving style of education for the majority of the Brazilian people, not simply for the, uh, the, the youth of the propertied classes. The, these are the concrete ways in which we would democratize the market economy instead of simply regulating it. And the counterpart to democratizing the market economy is deepening democracy. We need a high-energy democracy, a, a democracy that does not require crisis to permit change. And that means innovation in our constitutional arrangements, uh, equipping the presidential regime that we copied from the United States with mechanisms rapidly to break deadlock, for example, through anticipated elections. Mr. Unger, I've got about a minute and a half left, and I want to ask you one last thing. And that is, uh, I want to pick up on one of the descriptors you used earlier in our conversation. You said, Brazil seethes with human energy and life. Now, I've I got to tell you, I love Canada, but I've never heard Canada described that way. What is it about Brazil that makes it seethe with human energy and life? Uh, it's, a, it's a vast confusion. Uh, you know, we, we Europeans, African slaves, uh, were dropped into this tropical continent. Uh, there they encountered Indians uh, over a vast frontier, a vast mixture, a, a blending of, of peoples and, and experiences. It is a, it is a testament to the constructive genius of ordinary humanity, uh, that this vitality could have subsisted in the face of such tremendous inequality and oppression. Hmm. Uh, life is the supreme good. It comes before everything else. And if we equip life, then we will have everything. And my hunch is not having to put up with either the Canadian or the New England winter probably helps as well. Just a hunch. Well, but we have extremes of heat. Nature is not the problem. <laughs> Nature can be part of the solution. The problem lies within us. Gotcha. Mr. Unger, it's so good of you to come on TVO tonight and share your thoughts about Brazil. We appreciate your time very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.